Welcome to Rose Red Homestead, and it's breakfast time. So I'm going to take this thermos that has been on its side here for about an hour and open it up. About an hour ago, I put one cup of boiling water, half a cup of steel cut oats, and a handful of craisins in this thermos. And I shook it up and laid it on its side. And my breakfast should be ready. Oh, yes it is. Perfectly cooked. Absolutely perfectly cooked. So, here it is. There are all those wonderful cranberries that used to be dried and now they're soft and ready to eat with this cereal. So, I'm going to have breakfast and we'll be back in just a moment to do some more thermos jug cooking. I have here a collection of thermos jugs. Um, three of them are Stanley. I really do like Stanley because they are, have, are, they are stainless steel on the inside. This one is a, I forgot. Oh, Rubbermaid, there it is right there. And um, Jim and I also have two Rubbermaids that are this, this is a 24 ounce size and we have two of these in our bug out bags that I did not retrieve because I like to leave them in there. But with a variety of sizes like this um, on hand, you can really do some great off-grid cooking. And this is good for camping. It's also good for emergency preparedness when you are really wanting to conserve your energy if the grid is down. So it usually takes only about five to seven minutes of uh, fuel time to get the water heated or the dish heated, whatever. Now the difference between what we're going to do today and what you may be used to is that we're actually going to use the thermos jugs to cook the food. Lots of times what we do, um, we can fill a thermos like this with already prepared soup, nice and hot, take it to lunch and open it up and we have the soup that is still hot. But what I did this morning was I put the uncooked ingredients in this thermos. Um, and then for over the period of an hour, it cooked that food and made it ready to eat. Now, one of the things that we want to remember is that we need to preheat these just like you would preheat an oven. And so you put a little bit of, uh, or some boiling water in these prior to getting ready so that it gets everything heated up. Now, if you are in an emergency situation, that water is precious. So you can also, it's clean water when you put it in, and actually I have hot water in here and hot water in here because these are the two that we're going to um, use in just a few minutes. But that hot water can then be used for hot chocolate or, or other drinks, or it can be poured back in your water containers because it's completely clean. So here is the procedure. After you have preheated, then you need to decide exactly what um, you need to do with the food. So today we're going to be cooking beef stew and chicken noodle soup. This one I have used, even though we are not going to use it today, I have used this one for making yogurt and it works great for making yogurt. So we're just gonna set this one aside for right now and we're just going to work with, uh, with these. Now this one we have already used. This is a 24 ounce and I could, I could almost double the amount of breakfast that I cooked in here this morning and it would be enough for both Jim and me. But I'm going to put this one aside too. So that just leaves these two. Um, this one was a find. This is a three-quart Stanley vacuum container. And so it has the clamp bounds and we'll be opening this one up in just a minute. This is a two-quart. We're going to be making our chicken noodle soup in mm -hmm. right here. 
So I have the stew ingredients right here. And notice that they are cut in probably smaller pieces than I would ordinarily because um, I want them to be able to cook through and through. The meat is cut quite small. The veggies are cut quite small. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to dredge the meat in this flour. Now this is a half a cup of flour, so it's way more than I need, but I also need some thickening because this is going to be stew and not soup. So I have in here a fresh ground pepper, salt, and some Italian seasoning. So I'm going to just toss the meat in here and we need to get all of these ingredients heated completely through so once I have dredged these with flour I'm going to take them over to the stove and um, we will just brown the meat sear the meat on the edges and I'm going to add a little extra flour for thickening then I will add the bouillon and the veggies and we're going to heat everything to a boiling for five minutes. Now nothing will be cooked at that time but once things have boiled and we get the right consistency because we want stew and not soup then we will put everything in this big uh, container right here. So we're going to move over to the stove and get started over there. So I have just a little bit of canola oil in the bottom and I'm going to put the meat in. I'm sprinkling more flour because I want this to be thickened. And then we'll put a little bit of the bouillon in. And here's the last of our half a cup of flour. And the rest of our bouillon. In go the vegetables. Thick, rich stew. And we're going to let that boil for five minutes to get everything heated. All right, we'll come back when we're ready to put it in the container. Now, I didn't even let it boil for five minutes. It was very thoroughly heated after about three minutes, and that's all of the um, energy that I wanted to use on the stove. So, it's ready to go into our container. Now, this has been preheating probably for about half an hour. You don't need to let it preheat for that long. Two or three minutes is fine, but it was just that I put it in fairly early. So, I just undo these clamps. And sometimes a vacuum is formed by the hot water or hot food on the inside. If that's the case, there's this handy dandy little uh, plug that you can pull and uh, release the vacuum. So here we are. Did you see the steam come out? So this is nice and hot. And I'm just going to dump this. And we'll open up our stew. Look how lovely this is. Nice gravy, veggies, but nothing is cooked. And so I'm just gonna put the whole thing in here. And here we have it right here. Now I wanna preserve all of that heat, so I'm going to put the lid on right away and set this aside, and this will be ready for dinner. This will take about six hours to completely cook. So the thing about um, cooking with thermos jugs is that you just have to plan your time. So we'll set this aside, and we'll be right back and show you how to put together chicken noodle soup. We're back now with, uh, I said chicken noodle soup, it's not going to be noodles because pasta doesn't do so well in um, uh, thermos jug cooking, but I am going to use rice and some lentils. Um, the chicken that we're going to use is some of our home canned uh, chicken, and so um, I've already gotten it out of the jar and it's right here. And uh, It came from the refrigerator, so that I'm going to put it in our saucepan, um, and I also dumped the juice from the jar into this saucepan already. And then this is one quart of um, turkey broth that I made with our Thanksgiving turkey. This is the turkey broth, and um, because it also came from the refrigerator, we're going to heat this pot up to a boiling, make sure that everything is hot. But that's all we're going to put in this pot. Everything else is dried, dehydrated. So I'm going to get this going. Into this bowl, we're going to put all of these dried things. 
Now, notice that these aren't raw, like the celery, carrots, and potatoes. Rather, these have been dehydrated. So they don't need to go over in the pot. They're just going to be rehydrated in here. So I'm only going to be putting about, oh, like a half of a cup of rice, because I just want the rice to be swimming around in that broth. And then um, here are the lentils and we'll probably do about a half a cup of the lentils. Then um, here are some uh, dehydrated vegetables. I just did these last week. We'll put that many vegetables in. This is dehydrated celery leaves that I've not opened before. And I love the flavor of celery leaves. So I'm gonna be putting, mm, that just smells so good, a few celery leaves in there to give it that flavor. And then these are some of my dehydrated Walla Walla onions. And so this makes it really, really nice when you have all of these uh, dehydrated things that you've done yourself and all you need to do is just add some broth and then you can cook them in a thermos and have a meal and uh, it's great for taking to work or in emergency situations or for camping for that matter all right so we are set and ready to go just as soon as uh, this is heated up to a boiling so we'll be back when we're ready to put everything here into our thermos so we're back, this was boiling away over there on the stove, and now we want to act quickly because we want to preserve as much heat as possible as we can. So this has had boiling water in it for a while, so it should be nice and hot. Now, the problem with this one is the size of the mouth. This little funnel is gonna work for some of this stuff, so I'm just gonna pour until the solids come. The solids won't go through this funnel. At least we'll get that hot liquid in there. Okay, now. We'll just attempt to do the solids like this. Okay, now seal this up. Shake it up, and then we're gonna put it on its side. And this one takes only about three hours before it is done. So we'll be back after this is done to open it up, and then we will be back when the stew is done, and we'll see what that looks like as well. So we will see you soon. It has been a little more than three hours, so our soup should be done. So let's check it out. I am going to dump the whole thing into this bowl so we can take a good look at it. Hey, so there we have our soup. It is a little bit green from the peas and the green beans, but it is a true soup and the solids are floating in the broth, and so that makes it a soup. So this is enough for a small family and enough for Jim and I to have for lunch, which we will do. And um, it is still very hot. I need to taste it to see how it is. Lentils are perfectly done, the rice is done. The flavor is really good. That turkey broth gave it a good flavor. It needs a little salt and pepper, but we can do that at the table. So this is our um, rendition of a, a chicken soup, a very hearty soup that is full of good uh, veggies and rice and lentils. So we'll have lunch in just a little bit, and then when the stew is done, we'll come back. Well, it has been six hours and it is just about time for dinner. This has been a thermos jug meal day. Breakfast, lunch, and now dinner. So I'm ready to um, unsnap these and we'll hope everything is done on the inside. 
and it has formed a vacuum. So I need to release the vacuum here. And now we can take that lid off. It's still very steamy. And I'm going to dish up two small bowls of this stew. Nice thick gravy. Get a little bit more meat there. And I suppose I should taste this too before I actually put it on the table. Mm. Mm. Hot. That was an onion. The onion is done. The carrot is not as soft as it would have been had I cooked it all day on the stove. Let's see a potato. Mmm. Potato's done just fine. So this is nice. And we cooked the whole thing in this thermos. So thermos jug cooking can be very efficient in terms of energy use and useful for taking lunches to work or um, camping and especially to have on hand for emergency preparedness. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for being with us on this adventure and we will see you at our next video.